What is Xuan Wen Chun? The first thing to know is that not all Wen Chun are the same. Unlike tennis, basketball, golf, or, a, or any of the other martial arts, Wen Chun differs drastically from one school to another. Even the transliterate spelling of the art from one school to another is so different that it doesn't even represent the sound anymore. And of all the martial arts, Wing Chun sadly has the biggest infighting amongst the family members. There is no unity amongst the families like other martial arts communities. Why? Firstly, it is because the Wing Chun Chuan Fa art, or Queen Fat in Cantonese, was developed out of secrecy by civilians for their own interest and meant to be passed down only to the family members and the closest friends. So, as with any secret, there will always be speculation to, as to what is actually the truth. Secondly, as with any art, it will always be open for interpretations. The other thing to understand is that China became one big populous country after many small kingdoms were subjugated by larger kingdoms, and eventually becoming one unified country under the first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, in 221 BC. Because of that, it was always difficult to homogenize the various different types of people, culture, and languages. Whereas small countries such as Japan and Korea, it was much easier because uh, the population was small and even their martial arts, which were very small in numbers compared to China. Also, historically, culturally, and by nature, the Japanese and the Koreans were much more regimented people than the Chinese. So their martial arts were also easily regimented and homogenized. Now Wing Chun was passed down secretly from one generation to another in small numbers, perhaps no more than six students per teacher. It is said that uh, Great Grandmaster Yip Man's master, Chen Wasun, took in only 16 students in his whole lifetime as a Wing Chun teacher. Now, it wasn't until Great Grandmaster Ip Man started to teach in Hong Kong that it started to spread widely and publicly. Now, today's uh, popularity of Wing Chun is owed to Great Grandmaster Ip Man, his student Bruce Lee, and the movies made about them. However, as with everything, anything that reaches the mass, there is a loss of quality, value, and authenticity. Now, Wing Chun was really designed for individuals instead of the mass. It's not like other martial arts where the teacher or senior student stands in front of a large group throwing punches, counting, while the rest followed. That type of training is for the military or martial arts, whereas Wing Chun was a civilian developed art, as explained in Lecture 1, to be taught one-on-one -on -one in small groups. It's an it's an art that requires individual attention for the individual to develop the art for him or herself from the principles that he or she learns from the teacher. It is no different than uh, going to any school of or say architecture, music or medicine where you learn the principles and the fundamentals of the subject and then you develop your own style and techniques. Now, as with any school or teacher, there will always be different from one to another, and then there will always be one better than the other. Now, to me, a good teacher is one with lots of factual information, has the skills to teach, and also has practical field experience. These three combined components make a good teacher, whether it is for mathematics, medicine, or music. In my Wing Chun journey, I have made it a point to excel in all three components. Now you see, a teacher can be very knowledgeable,
a terrible in communicating his knowledge across to his students. On the other hand, a teacher can be very good in communication, but has limited knowledge. You can also get a teacher who is communicable and academically knowledgeable, but lacks practical experience to know what really works in the real world. By the same token, you can also have a very talented and skilled practitioner who doesn't have the skill to teach or pass his skills to someone else. I had began, as all Wing Chun practitioners do, seeking knowledgeable, communicable, and practical teachers. I had spent 25 years under the tutelage of three excellent masters who were students of Great Grandmaster Yip Min's uh, first generation renowned students. But by a stroke of fate, I had to leave my studies with these teachers to go to Thailand. There I was at a loss of finding a comparable Wing Chun master. To fill in the gap, I took up Tai Chi, Qi Gong, and other martial arts while continuing searching for a Wing Chun master. But it was all in vain. I thought, how was I going to resolve this dilemma? I finally came to the conclusion that I would teach myself by re-engineering what I had learned so far. Now, it became a major turning point in my Wing Chun journey. My move to Thailand and my failure to find a teacher turned out to be a blessing in disguise. I was forced to think for myself not always rely on someone else. I pondered and realized that everything I knew of anything was actually self-taught. Yes, we have teachers along the way, but in the end, it's actually you who learn and teach yourself. Now, your parents may tell you to do this, don't do that, but you actually learn it from your own experience by doing it whether rightly or wrongly. Or in the school, your teacher explains and writes things on the blackboard, but you don't really learn anything till you've actually went home and did your homework. So with the guidance that I received from my previous teachers, I took every piece of Wing Chun, forms and drills, and examined it microscopically to see how and why it was made that way. I also looked at each piece with the view that I had learned it wrong until proven right. I took some major principles of Wing Chun as a standard of measure to test it. I asked myself these questions. One, does each piece adhere to the center line principle? Two, is each piece economical, efficient, and effective? Three, does each piece contain both offense and defense properties? Four, does each piece have a purpose or functionality? Five, does each piece adhere to the laws of physics? If any piece does not comply with these measures, then it needs to be discarded or altered. From viewing all that I had learned from Wing Chun so far and reanalyzing every part, I was able to re-engineer it to something that was not only sensible to me, but can be sensible to everyone else. I was no longer claiming that what I knew was factual because my teacher told me, or that his teacher told him, or great-grandmaster great said so. But it was based on science and logic. I wasn't uh, altering Wing Chun to suit myself, but rediscovering the original Wing Chun that was lost in translation through the passage of time, from passing from one generation to another. Now, I truly believe that Wing Chun was developed on such foundations, that the founders took the known science of the time and their understanding of the human anatomy and put together the art. Unlike other Chuen Fa, that try to emulate certain animals, birds, insects, reptile, or even an intoxicated person. In scrutinizing Wing Chun as I did, I believe I found the original art as it was 
created to be. Simple, scientific, and sensible. With my new discovery of the old, I decided to call it Xuan Wing Chun to personalize it and differentiate it from the other school. I did not change the name of the art or change the spelling in respect of the art and the creators. My, my teaching still follows the traditional curriculum that was outlined by great grandmaster Ip Man and his forefathers. That is the three standalone forms, the three apparatus forms, and the drills associated with them. However, I did create some new drills to enhance and speed up the learning process. One of the main purposes of the forms and the drills is to raise the consciousness level of the practitioner. Now, what does that mean? It means to de develop one's awareness to a higher level or acuteness. It means to speed up the brain's, brain's processing power. It means to raise the sensory perceptions to a very high level. It means to have control over your thoughts and control over your body. These are the qualities that make a person sensitive, responsive, reactive, astute, alert, determined, intelligent, agile, fast, and so on. These are the qualities required in dealing with forces and conflicts, whether they are physical or mental. The highly skilled sportsmen, soldiers, lawyers, businessmen have these qualities. Techniques are just tools that these traits uh, apply or use. And these skilled people acquire these qualities from experience, practice, and inherent inner characteristics. Often they actually don't know how they developed them or acquired them. Not everybody becomes skilled like them after spending as many years practicing their trades. It is because these people rely on techniques alone, which is useless without the inner qualities that drive them. And these traits, you can actually uh, call it the spirit. A spirit that drives a person to do what uh, he needs to do. Now, most martial arts tend to focus on just on the techniques, teaching techniques and produce inadequate students. Now if your goal was just to collect as many techniques as possible then that's all you have in your bag. Okay? But techniques like tools and weapons are dead objects unless you know how to use them. But also just knowing how to use them doesn't suffice because you must know what weapon to use, under what circumstances and when exactly to use it to make it effective. That requires intelligence, awareness, uh, sensitivity and all the elements I had just uh, mentioned. Therefore, if we consciously focus on developing our uh, awareness, sensitivity, responsiveness, agility, intelligence and all that, we can achieve those goals more easily, quickly and successfully. The objective of my course is to help you develop this awareness and make you teach yourself like I did to myself and you learn to ask questions and answer them yourself. If you can't come up with the uh, solution, you can ask me and I will give you whatever answer I have, but you don't need to accept it readily. You should still analyze and make sense of it and accept it only if it makes full sense. Otherwise, you keep on searching until you find uh, a suitable answer and you can tell me and enlighten me. This is my method of teaching because I can't solve your problems all the time. I can't be in two places at one time. You could be in trouble and need immediate resolve somewhere. But if you had always relied on someone, somebody else to help you out, then you become helpless. But if you had already the experience of solving prob problems on your own, then you will find the solution yourself. This is something that the other schools don't usually do. You go to school and you ask a question and you usually get an unsatisfactory answer. Or 
You're told that you'll find out later, one of these days. And if you, if you keep digging your teacher, uh, then you'll be an annoyance to him. And soon enough, you will learn to shut up and just follow. And before long, you just become part of the herd and stick around just for the sake of camaraderie or loyalty to the school, family, teacher, or the cult. Now, different families have different cultures. As the head of the family, I give my children the fundamental tools and direct, uh, guide them to walk the path I think that's best for them. However, I also give them the in independence of choosing their own tools and paths to learn and experience on their own and so that they're not limited to my knowledge and experience but to excel beyond my achievements. As a Chuen Fa teacher, uh, I'm like a father of the family. Now traditionally, a Chuen Fa teacher accepts a student and calls him Xue Sheng, literally meaning born to learn, a student. And the, te and the student calls the teacher Lao Shi, which means age or experienced teacher and when the student sticks around uh, for some years and has proven to be diligent, dedicated, determined, uh, loyal, uh, respectful, disciplined, then the teacher inducts him into his group of disciples called Tuti, literally meaning apprentice or a disciple, at which time he is allowed to call this teacher Shifu, which means teacher, father. However, there's another uh, uh, two words sounding the same but meaning differently, and it's written differently in Chinese, which means master also, but it means the master of a trade or skill, such as a master of uh, a master chef or master craftsman or master artist, which can be applied to both male and female. But the terminolo terminology uh, father, teacher is exclusively used to address your own master. For other teachers of uh, other masters of other martial arts, you can call them Shifu by using the other characters. But also you can call them Lao Shi. So you can address, say, for example, Mr. Uh, uh, your master Wong as uh, Wong. Uh, Huang Lao Shi in Mandarin or Wong Lao Si in, in Cantonese. To cap it off, Xuan Wang Chun will re reveal to you the finer details of Wang Chun based on the laws of physics and human anatomy or biomechanics. It will teach you in depth the how, why, what, and when of the each Wang Chun movement. Very quickly, it will make you realize your full potential as you are, whether you are under or overweight, male or female, tall or short, young or old. But as you continue training, you will begin to increase your potential as you become more fit physically and mentally. It will help you develop a stronger and faster mind and body will help you think for yourself in problem solving. It will help you build your character. It will also teach you about Chinese culture, language, and history. They are all part of the making of Wing Chun. It will make you a master of the art that you can teach and apply skillfully. The curriculum is developed as a master's course for you to understand Wing Chun in depth as a holistic and universal art that can be applied not only against physical challenges but in mental challenges that we face in our daily lives. My system is not limited as a style but can be incorporated into or applied against other Chuen Fa or martial arts because of its universality. My training method is direct and logical. It is not based on quantum physics, metaphysics, or pseudoscience. It is based on simple science that you have learned in primary and secondary schools. It is science that you experience every day, such as gravity, normal force, simple machine, and Newton's laws. 
It is based on biomechanics and kinesiology that we experience every day. The Xuan Wing Chun system is actually just another training method for achieving the same goal as other Chuen Fa and martial arts. However, as you know, when it comes to sports, warfare, business, what makes an individual or team excel over another is the training method and the trainer. There are always superior trainers and training methods in any type of course. The Xuan Wing Chun course is the most logical, practical, and effective method of learning Wing Chun. This is what Xuan Wing Chun is about.